my name is Brandon Kraft and today I want to show you a quick tutorial on the new plugin from Yenobox and it's called Storm. This plugin is for Final Cut Pro, After Effects, Premiere Pro, and Motion. For today's tutorial I'll be showing this to you in Motion but I'm sure you can follow along in those other programs as well. This plugin is a procedural displacement generator and we can achieve some really awesome effects fairly quickly by dragging a few sliders and it renders super fast. And quite honestly, if I were to try to achieve this similar effect in an advanced 3D application, such as Cinema 4D or something like that, it would take a lot longer and I'm sure the render would take a lot longer as well. So here we go. I have Storm loaded up in Apple Motion and you can get that from the Add Object Generators tab. We have Yenobox and we have Storm. And then also in Library, Generators, Yenobox, and then you can drag Storm right on over to load it up. Let's head over to the inspector for Storm, and by default this is what you're going to see when you load it up. Now before diving into this tutorial, if you're not familiar with Yenobox Storm, or if you're not familiar with Nodes 3, these plugins that Yenobox makes, they include tons of presets. Let me show that to you real quick before we dive into the tutorial. So again, in the inspector underneath the generator tab, we have this button right here, Browse Presets. Fresh out the box, over 200 animated presets and templates are included. Take this abstract Chrome 01 for example. Let's apply that. And notice here I am running on 30 frames per second and this is almost full speed playback right here. Let's try this Fire Twist 02. So notice this one here, yes, yeah, not playing at 30 frames per second, but we're still getting some feedback in the viewport. And right here in a moment, I'll show you how you can speed up your playback in the viewport as well. And what the heck, let's try one more, Liquid Studio 03. So in this one here, we see some reflections and some refractions. Again, included 200 plus animated presets and templates. Comes fresh out of the box with Yenobox Storm. But now back to the tutorial. Now something I'm going to go ahead and do real quick is head to the Geometry tab. And this is where we can actually pick our three-dimensional shape. But before I do that, for speed and playback while I'm previewing this, I'm going to set that mesh resolution to low quality just speeds things up. And when it comes time to render, we can bump this up to high, very high, or even extreme. Now that we have that mesh quality set to low, for our primitive, for our three-dimensional object, right now we have a sphere that is being displaced. We have a few other options, and for this one I'm going to use a torus. Notice our shape does change. It does kind of look like a torus, but then again, it is being displaced, so it's not a perfect torus. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick so that we can dive into this cave. And one way to quickly take away that noise is head to Fractal Noise, take the displacement, and let's just knock it down to zero for right now. But notice as we drag this slider, we are displacing that geometry. Now this may look like a flat two-dimensional object, but uh, two ways to see that it is 3D. You have your bounding box here that kind of gives you that three-dimensional view. And then if we also take the torus itself and we go to the Transform, this is how we transform our primitive. If I rotate it on the x-axis, you can see that we do have a three-dimensional object. But I'm going to take this, set it back to zero, and instead of me rotating it on the x, I'm going to take the orientation of that primitive, and I'm going to set it to the y-axis. So essentially, it is like we did rotate the torus on the x-axis. But by me doing it this way, when it comes time to rotate this tunnel and apply some motion, these three axes here will work the way they should. So we have our torus. This is our tunnel, so to speak, and our tunnel is going to be inside of this torus. It's hollow on the inside. Now we could move the camera to get it up here to it, or we could move the torus itself. Since I had the transform menu open, let's slide the torus over to the right. I'm just adjusting that X position some, and I'm gonna put it right about here for right now. Let's take the Z position and let's bring the torus closer to the camera. And again, I haven't even messed with the camera yet. So I'm going to drag in the negative direction on the Z and we're probably going to have to go past negative 1000, which is fine. Let's just keep on going. And you're going to see right here in a second, boom, we're inside the tunnel. Now let's start displacing this geometry to get our organic cave and whatnot. We may come back here a little bit later and fine tune this X position, but for now it's okay. Let's come back down to Fractal Noise. For the displacement, let's just drag up a little bit and we can see that we're starting to get some 3D deformation, some displacement in this torus. Let's go ahead and change our colors so we can get a darker color just for the sake of this video, but you can adjust the colors all that you want. Now right now we do see an orange and a gradient type of temperature. 
If we uncheck invert gradient, now the brighter areas are closer to the camera, if you will, and the darker areas are towards the back. For the gradient type, I'm going to go with a simple gradient. For my start, I'm going to go with a dark color. And I'll leave my end color at a light color. So the way I understand this with invert gradient unchecked, the start is going to be these colors that are closer to the camera, and this white's going to be the colors that are farther away from the camera. Let's make this pop a little bit more with a quick adjustment, and that's going to be Fresnel. Let's crank the Fresnel up, and just by us dragging this slider, you can see that we are adjusting some detail on this displaced geometry, and it's adding that detail to the edges, so to speak. I'm gonna come back up here to my color, and I'm gonna set my end color to, let's see, let's go with a dark blue, something like that. Let's go back to the fractal noise. This fractal noise here, we have different types of fractal noise. Let's see what directional looks like. That looks good for this tunnel effect. And something else I want to do too, I want to see more of this tunnel and I kind of want to get a better view of where my camera is. If we go up to the camera menu, let's take our field of view and let's drag it on up. And it feels like we're zooming out, but essentially the camera's staying in the same spot, but we're just changing our field of view. So a higher field of view here, in my opinion, does look better. And notice here, you know, our quality is not the best, but again, I have that mesh resolution set to low. When we crank this up, this is going to look fantastic. Let me go ahead and show that to you right now real quick. Here's my mesh resolution underneath the geometry tab. If I go ahead and set this up to high quality, look at that. Look how much it changed. And this looks beautiful when you go to render the animation. But for playback right now, I'm going to keep that to low quality. You can clearly see a big difference there. All right, let's get moving through this tunnel. So like we're in some type of ship or whatever, and we're flying through this tunnel. We can use keyframes or we can use an animation slot. Now the keyframe way, I'll go ahead and show that to you real quick. For our transform, we want to transform this torus. And if I drag on the rotation Y in the negative direction, notice we are going through our tunnel here. And this is exactly what we want. Now don't worry about it cutting off right here. We can just take our torus, or we can adjust our camera as well. But I'll come to the transform for the torus, and I'll just lower this number some. And notice as we do that, we are getting more towards the inside of this tunnel. And now again, if we come and adjust our rotation Y, now we're flying through this tunnel. So we can keyframe this, obviously, but something else we can do too is take advantage of our animation slots. So in this animation menu up top, we have six destinations, and each destination you have over 30 different parameters that you can animate. The one that I want to adjust is the one I was just scrubbing through a second ago. Transform Rotation Y. Now I did mention negative degrees, so we want a negative speed. That's what's going to make it to appear to travel forward through this tunnel. And if I play this now, it's going to travel, but it's going to be slow. And that's all because of this speed. We can go well past negative five, Let's try negative 30, and let's replay this. So now we're traveling through this tunnel. Now what I want to do is I want to make this tunnel move itself, the surface of this tunnel. You know, right now it just appears that we're traveling through a tunnel that is still. The surface is not moving. Well, a quick way to make this surface move, if we come down to our fractal noise, Again, play around with all these settings, but the one I'm interested in right now is this offset X. And notice as I do that, we are not playing right now. Notice we are paused. But as we drag this offset, we can get some crazy deformation and animation from a steel frame. And when we do this in conjunction with us traveling through the tunnel, I think we get a nice effect. So you can keyframe this, or guess what? Setting that back to zero, I'm going to go use another destination. Remember what that was. Fractal Noise Offset X, and I'm just going to crank this up to 5 and see what happens. Let's replay this. Now again, on low quality, you know, it's not the best looking thing, but again, this is for playback purposes. I'm playing at 30 frames per second right now on this low quality. I'll tell you what, I think I want to set that even higher. Let's try 15. Get this back. Oh, that's crazy looking, check it out. So obviously tons of things that we can play around with here. Now some other things I did in that intro video, I did keyframe some of these gradients here. Notice you can keyframe those colors. So feel free to try that. But one more thing I want to show you here is in the surface lighting, 
let's add some specular to it. And just by dragging this slider, you see those white spots that are popping up? If we take the specular shininess and if we crank this up, it actually takes it away. But if we bring this down, we can bring a lot more specular into our scene. Let's try a little more for now. Let's give this a play. Now you may look at this and say, okay, this does not look good. Uh, it looks a little bit distorted or blurry, but I assure you, check this out. Let's look at this scene right here, just a random spot right here at the end of the scene. Actually, I'll come in here randomly somewhere in here. So looking at the specular here, looking at some of the edges here, if we come back to our geometry, let's set this up to high quality, and that does improve our edges. It does improve the specular. Now you got tons of other settings you can mess around with. The other thing I recommend doing is when it comes time for rendering, come down here and select Super Sampling. This is going to reduce your aliasing. So let's check on that and let's go ahead and render this quick scene that we've created. Now nothing crazy here. When I go to Share and Export the Movie, not changing anything in my settings, but when I go to Render just to get a quick feedback, I select Highest Quality and I just come in here and uncheck all of these boxes and everything turns out pretty darn nice. But yeah, this scene right here took about 45 seconds to render. Very organic, uh, very flowy, and very little uh, adjustments to do. Just dragging a few sliders here and there. Procedural displacement done very quickly using Yenobox Storm. If you like what you saw here and you want to see more tutorials, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. I'd be happy to do more. Just let me know. And again, my name is Brandon Kraft. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.